Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a very quick video on value systems and how I view value in people. Now, it can get pretty complicated, but I just want to give you a, a little bit of perspective into uh, how I see the world in certain ways. Because uh, when, when I say I see the world in certain ways, it's really a composite of obviously my own experiences, but also a lot of experiences, perspectives, advice, philosophy, and uh, views and experiences from very successful individuals in life uh, from billionaires to millionaires entrepreneurs all sorts of different types of people with different types of success so it may help broaden your perspective and open your eyes because some people have a very shallow perspective on success and arguably it's not their fault they just haven't really uh, been told or really been shown a different light or been open to see things a different way so if you're that open stick around so let's just get started I'm just going to go over the, the main specifics I'm not saying this way is right but perhaps it might get you thinking so I'll start with this example I was talking to these people they were in school uh, they were women and uh, they were going on about I asked them what they wanted to do and they're going on and on about how uh, they're off to uh, graduate school and doing all this stuff and I've talked to a lot of people like some people are they're off to med school they're in med school lots of med school people uh, doing a graduate school degree and then med school and then this guy's traveling the world volunteering in Africa and then he's off to med school or they're taking a gap year and then they're applying to med school or PT school law school on and on and on and then some people get jobs but anyhow I'm getting off track basically these people uh, especially one in particular she was sort of leading the conversation in a certain way and uh, she was kinda of like the central personality and so these were people I just met um, I actually bumped into a couple times but basically they were very uh, almost prestigious and so I wanted to test something out and I told them something along the lines of like I, I noted that I was fairly passionate about what I was doing. I didn't go deep into it because I, I didn't want to brag or anything like that. Um, and so I typically am very shallow unless you dig into it on how deeply passionate and how uh, much I work and so forth. And again, I'm not perfect or as great as I can be. There's people who are hustling on levels beyond my comparison. But I wanted to test the waters and see her value system. So I told them something like, I'm not going to graduate school or going to do anything. Uh, after I graduate, I'm just going to get a job. And immediately, boom, she just shut off. She didn't want to talk to me at all. She just, like, she didn't even try. She just turned around and... Of course, I could have kept the conversation going and so forth. Um, looking back, I probably could have like asked her, if, is this a problem and so forth. But regardless if it was or not, the point is, uh, some people have this perspective. Who knows if she did or not? Uh, the thing is, though, um, some people have a very superficial view of uh, value in this way. They're just like, okay, uh, if you go to a prestigious graduate school or uh, you get a degree in law or business or you go to med school, you are of high value and you're going places and you're an awesome person. Not exactly, okay? So let's go down the rabbit hole. Let's go pretty deep here. Now this gets, you, I can go on and on about this, but let's make this very simple. There are many people who have gone to these high-end institutions and they hate their life. Investment bankers working eight hours a week, 90 hours a week and they just hate their lives it's miserable work but they're making so much money that they can't quit and yet their standard level of happiness is down the drain they're again it's not every investment banker every doctor every lawyer but that's one thing to consider and on top of that there's all sorts of different types of people who just because they went to a prestigious school they're not doing as well as the guy who didn't graduate high school who created this million dollar business I see a lot of those guys uh, 
they're not hustling as hard as certain people. They may still have a lot of moral problems. They may be jerks to people. They may have a lot of things that they need to sort out. And just because they went to a high-end school, Harvard or Princeton or whatever, whatever for undergraduate or a graduate school, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're all good and great for the rest of their lives. And oftentimes they could possibly have a lot of things that they need to sort out. They could be too glamorized by things that won't necessarily truly make them happy or make them money. They may have a problem with their uh, uh, moral compass. They may be jerks to people. They may not be that great people. It can go on and on. They, they may not be great parents. They may be emotionally unstable and on and on and on. And then there are individuals who are exceptional people and for whatever reason, childhood background, financially, they're at a state university or they're at a community college or they didn't go to school and they're hustling harder than you can ever think. And again, this gets into my video on how hard work isn't everything. Uh, working smart is very important too. But um, they're doing a heck of a lot of things. And um, they're doing just as well. And one thing that Warren Buffett said uh, is that uh, he went to University of Pennsylvania. And then for the next two years, he switched to Nebraska State. And he said during his undergraduate time, the quality of education was the same. Just because this school was more prestigious doesn't mean anything. So oftentimes the knowledge is there for the taking. I mean, for him, he went, he just, he just eats through these thick textbooks on accounting. So the knowledge was there for him. And obviously he was fortunate enough to be able to afford it. But again, it's not really the what school you go to. I mean, I'm sure there's individuals who do very well, genetically gifted at Ivy League schools, but there's also people who are squandering their time or I would definitely invest, not invest in, and I would choose to invest in that guy at the state school who's hustling harder. So these are things you gotta think about. And there's all sorts of other things that I value uh, more so than um, other things, such as uh, um, how you treat others, how you are as an individual, um, life lessons, morals, uh, I mean, many things, work ethic, your knowledge on happiness, on and on and on. So just keep these things in mind because, I mean, one example is I saw this elementary school teacher and he was just killing it. He was dressed amazingly. He was up on Saturday morning and he was just helping with this math tutoring session. And it was just incredible. I respected this man and I just met him. And this was a man who just, uh, he did his job the best that he could. You could just tell it. He was absolutely on point. He was uh, great to every single kid there. And he was nice to them. He knew them. He uh, talked to them. And this was a man I just uh, off the bat respected. And I, I get those people uh, occasionally all, from all walks of life, all professions. And it, it just warms my heart because... You know, those are people I can respect more than some guy who's uh, cheating his way uh, to make money. And even if he has millions of dollars that he's throwing on sports cars and so forth, his whole life could be a complete mess. And the money he made could just be all from lying and cheating and being horrendous. Like, he's probably not as happy on the inside either as this man who's just doing everything right. So you got to keep these things in mind. Warren Buffett's a great example on many different levels. He lives in the same house that he bought when he was like, uh, like, what, 30, 40 years of age. Now he's 80. And that house costs like $30,000. And he remarks on how he sees all these rich people. He's this man worth $60 billion. And he's like, I see many people with all these cars and huge houses. And to me, it looks like the possessions own them rather than the other way around. So I can go on and on and on and on and on about this, but again, you know, just think it through. There's more and more about this. There's plenty of videos you can watch. 
think about it. And I'll see you guys later in my next video. It, it, it truly is a very fascinating topic. And I'll see you later. Peace.